everyone. I'm really excited because this is the last day, and in a bad way. Okay. Come on, sincerity. Uh, four talks, never again. Okay. For you and for myself. Uh, so as uh, Laura, Laura was mentioning, what another no. the future of four chart station? <laughs> Did I pay for that? I already see that. I already saw that yesterday. Um, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe that's a proof that there is a future of four chart. There is so much future that uh, we need two sessions about that. But this morning will be uh, about something else, not the future modules, but how to break our chart. Let's break it and make it in PHP or Node.js <laughs> or whatever. Because <laughs> .NET, VNext, Vaporware, you know. <laughs> no, this is awesome. There is a guy here. We can say that. We need to cut it. This is awesome. So, um, everything I will say today will be about my opinions, and you can disagree. But <laughs> I create feelings in others that they themselves don't understand, OK? I will ask Eric, Eric, where are you? You don't answer. You, you, you've seen those jokes already last year. You should remember them. Maybe you don't remember. OK. I reuse them because they are not public, so that's fine. But you, you are not allowed to answer. Who said that? It's not me. I could have, but it's not me. OK, that's fine. Who was it? Uh, Lightning McQueen, no. Cars. No. <laughs> uh, more seriously, uh, what I will talk about is my vision. But you can disagree, OK? Please disagree. You can also complete it. I hope you will complete my opinions. Uh, but I can also remove your uh, <laughs> commit rights. OK, Piotr is not here. Been drinking a lot. Uh, Nick, <laughs> whatever has the commit rights, Sipke, Antoine, everyone. Uh, really, uh, the goal is to see the long term vision of Orchard. Not just what we will do for 1.9, the new modules, but what we should do in the longer term. Like, what will Orchard V next be? Uh, also, make some impactful decisions. Will we break Orchard at some point? Do we want continuity? Uh, can we learn from others' mistakes about that? And uh, to do that, we need the community acceptance. If we take decisions as a committee or as the devs of Orchard and you, you, don't, you the community, don't agree with that, it's useless because we'll do a CMS for five people. <coughs> okay? And one of them doesn't code or doesn't know how to code. So, uh, Ilan. So, you know, so four people for a CMS, that's not useful. So we need the community acceptance for that. Uh, First, what makes Orchard? In what Orchard is, is um, unique? Uh, another one, just the first one was warm up. Kevin's a girl. This one is easy. Adam, where is Adam? Oh, he's not yet here. Nobody? The kid from us. Russell. <laughs> Kevin's a girl. So who's Kevin? <laughs> not the oh. little uh, oh, yeah. the bird, which actually. He's a girl and not a boy, okay? Your name is Kevin. So about Orchard, let's see what Orchard is. But first, some history. When we had to deal with websites, I was not born, but uh, I was, but not in the internet. Uh, there were static pages, and you had to handle static pages and to manage HTML pages. Then you, well, you can also reuse Notepad. And then you had dynamic pages. And this is, these were no more static pages that were ma managing, but uh, database, and you could reuse some code. Uh, then came the content management systems, and then you could just focus on your or your content and uh, reuse modules and themes. But I think the next step, this is, this is today's uh, uh, story, but next step will be to manage software as a service. No more content management system, you will have software as a service. And then only, well, it's also today, you will be able to manage customers and no more the content. So oh, let's create a new restaurant website, and another restaurant website, another restaurant <coughs> website. So you will manage websites and no more the content itself. So this is the next step, to reuse the software itself and no more the module themes or the APIs or the HTML pages. You will reuse the system itself. Then look at the, the current alternatives we have today. On the .NET world, we have Umbraco, .NET Nuke, Sidefinity, 
and sidecore. Okay, I'm just mentioning them because they're the, the, well, there is our truth, but it's not on the list. Um, and maybe we should look at where they are going and what they will do in the next years or what they are currently doing um, today. Uh, if we look at PHP, we'll see WordPress, and I mentioned Joomla, but mostly Drupal. This is what we learn from. Um, but we could also look at other technologies like Node.js. There aren't any very well-known CMS on Node.js today, but Node.js is so um, trendy or used that there will be very well-known Node.js uh, Node CMSs uh, in, the, in the future. So maybe we should look also into what they are doing and what, where the concurrence is coming from or other ideas and can we take ideas from them and see what they are doing and why they are doing that. Uh, for instance, Zopol is betting a lot on e-commerce. Or Charlie is not really right now. We don't have any e-commerce module in the, in the core. We have e-commerce on the gallery. They are trying to do some one-stop e-commerce modules. I, I found a very nice uh, website, e-commerce website on the web using uh, Orchard. So maybe that's something we should also go, go to. WordPress is doing WordPress as a service for for a long time, so maybe that's where we should go. And uh, yeah, we'll see. The f one of the advantages of Orchard, and I think the main advantage of Orchard, it's open star. Everything is open. Okay. We have the source code open for sure, open source. We have an open steering committee because it's elected. Everyone from the community can vote for a steering committee. You define it's completely open. We have weekly meetings, and these meetings are accepting walk-ins. You can come and leave and we never see you again and sometimes you come back and sometimes you're always there. Um, and we push them on YouTube so that everyone can see them. Even if you can't join because it's early or too late for you, you can still see them on YouTube. So it's very public and we discuss things like nobody else discussed publicly about, like, uh, I don't know, bugs, how we fail, we ask feedback, we talk about the conference, the organization, budget, money, Whatever is open to, to talk at these conferences. So we should take the three guys there in line, <laughs> in front of everyone, apologizing. You apologize? At least we're here. Thank you for being here. <laughs> we also have open discussion forums. Everything we do or we say is on the discussion forum. There is not a single private forum we have. Sometimes we exchange emails, but just for <coughs> personal matter. Everything we talk about is on the forum. And everything we say and we think should be public is, is duplicated on the forum. Um, even the design discussions, how should we do this module, which mo next module should we do is, uh, is open. At least you can say something. Nobody reads that or cares about it, but you can say it. That's, that's good. And uh, yeah, no private mailing list. We have a mailing list and it's an open one. Everything is open in Orchard. Even the documentation is open, okay? <laughs> And it's on GitHub. Um, now let's talk about uh, other advantages of um, Orchard, but technical <coughs> advantages. What we do well, what is good in Orchard, what I think is good in Orchard. There are so many things, it doesn't fit into a slide, I try to yeah. fit it, but yeah, I've just focused on the most important one. So content types system is one of the technical advantages of Orchard. Um, being able to create, to adapt your contents based on your customer's need or your own need is very important. That's also one of the main advantages of Drupal and we took that from them. Uh, we took the ID. Uh, media management, the media management module, it's, it's a beauty. It has some flaws, but it's a beauty, okay? The projection module, wow. I remember when I demoed it in, a, it was 1.3. It was, it was a blast, again. From, we took the ideas from Drupal, the views module from Drupal, because it's so, it's so um, useful to be able to create queries and project them on a page or on a widget. That, that's really uh, something that is uh, shining in Orchard. Uh, the workflow module, nobody's using that. But what you can do with it, it's awesome. You, you saw Sipka's uh, demo yesterday. This is really great. And uh, I've never seen a workflow like this running, but, I'm, but it's good that we can do that. We can go to customer and say, yes, you can do that, and they like it. Uh, the extensibility, I think, is, what is maybe what everyone says is uh, why they chose Orchard. We can extend it. We can create modules. I can create an MVC view, and I can integrate it in my, app, in my website. That's very nice, because no CMS can do everything you need. It's not possible, because you have so 
crazy ID, a CMS will not like it in its CMS, uh, in its content. So, yeah, the accessibility is very, very important here. And also, it's ASP.NBC. So if you want to do a CMS based on ASP.NBC, uh, the only supported one, which is purely in ASP.NBC, I think is Orchard. The other ones have ASP.NBC support, but they are usually web forms based, and they accept um, MVC controller. The management will say one ASP.NET. It's everything ASP.NET, yes, but in the end, do you do web form development, ASP.NET, MVC development? Um, that's a little bit different. Um, what do others do better? I don't know, maybe you will say. What does .NET Nuke do better? Who has experience with .NET Nuke here? What is better in .NET Nuke than Orchard? What should we take from .NET Nuke? Yeah, there must be something. They are the number one in .NET, number one. They have marketing. So Balance. we need marketing? They do have a lot of modules. So they have a lot of modules, yeah. They're not it's French. super heavy. They are not <laughs> Simon. <laughs> they are not French. Maybe that's why I have so many French, but they are Canadian. Maybe that's, no. <laughs> they are not far away from here. They are in Vancouver, two hours drive north. Uh, so yeah, they have so many modules because they were the first, like 2003 or something, they started, maybe two. Um, yeah, they were the first on the market and uh, they have so many modules and such a user base that yeah, that's what they have and that maybe that's one of the best things they, they can have. Um, so let's try to get their community and their modules. Or let's work on the modules to make uh, as, as many as them. Um, okay, Drupal. They are in alphabetical order, if I didn't mess up. Uh, Drupal, does anyone have any experience with uh, Drupal? Steve, we have George and uh, Bertrand. Just old people use Drupal, great. Um, what's better in Drupal than Orchard? <laughs> Nothing? Nothing? Great. The community, yeah. the number of modules, yeah. uh, everything. Same thing. But technically, well, they have lots of very interesting modules. They have an e-commerce module. They have a company behind them which can support big, big uh, customers when they need that and can create huge websites and host everything, the Acquia company. So that's also something we don't have. We don't have any, we have Lombic, but there are two students in a garage in, uh, <laughs> in Hungary and <laughs> Maybe that's why, that's why we fail compared to Drupal. <laughs> Can you turn into a Koya quickly, please? Uh, yeah, they're also working on Drupal 8 right now, which will be based on object PHP, and which will have dependency injection. They will have an ORM. They, so they are copying Orchard somehow. <laughs> well, they, I'm sure they don't know about Orchard, but at least they are using the same uh, things that we are using today and they are rewriting everything. That's, that's, uh, so that's also a good thing for us because people are doing the same thing as we do today. Um, Sidecore, who has some experience with Sidecore? Steve, you have experience with everything. What, what, what is good? <laughs> what should we take from Sidecore? The price? No. Don't take the price from Sidecore. No. It's not free. Um. What do you like in Sidecore? They have support because there is a company behind. Yeah. So they can help you, they can do your website and... Some books. They have books? Resources. Yeah. Good, no, that's a good, good uh, yeah. feedback. There, is, there are no books on, about Orchard. There is one. Uh, no quite often. What's the name of the guy who made it uh, two years ago? The books from, uh, for Orchard? He's working for Couchbase, Couch Couch I think, right now. I can't remember his name, you'll find it. There is one book, but it's an introductory book. It's not very... Oh, it's running. John, John, John Zablocki. Zablocki, John Zablocki, yeah. Wow. And um, yeah. so yeah, maybe Sidecore has more resources and books, and like Drupal, <laughs> you go Drupal, books everywhere, okay? Uh, Localization of Sidecore is quite... Localization, yeah, this is something we have to work on. Uh, yeah, I have heard the same thing actually, yeah. The first, the first time I heard about Sidecore, they were focusing on the localization, so if you're in Europe, that's very important. Very good deep integration of localization. Now, Sidefinity. Who has some experience with Sidefinity? John? Sipke? 
<laughs> you are cheating on us? <laughs> okay. It's for research. It's for research, yeah. Everyone's cheating for research. Sure. Oh, sorry, darling, I was just doing some research. <laughs> I need to talk to Geraldine about that, okay? <laughs> because you're a scientific and you like you no know, science, research, or anything, proof, numbers, I need numbers. Oh, Geraldine, yeah. what are your numbers? So, <laughs> uh, is Sipke, Samuel, what, John? Um, I mean, in a little bit, I really get like, just like, like just the, the control you can have over a page, you know, just you can drag, very drag and drop, very, uh, I mean, you have to pay for the buck. I don't think it's worth the real fee if they had more of like a, uh, yeah. But I, I mentioned that yesterday, the dynamic layout thing, being able to place things, yeah. it, it talks to, to the user. It may, even if they don't know what a CMS is and that they need to handle the content and not the, the layout, yeah, I can drag and drop a title, wow, that's, that's what I want. That's what they want, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important for us to have a, a, a layout module. We have one, thank you, uh, one stop, and, uh, but we need to go further. Um, so, Russell, we talked about you. you, s you because we mentioned uh, Kevin Segal. You know, you know the quote, Kevin Segal. Yeah. So we talked about you. I said it was you. Is it the ponytail? Is it the ponytail? No, no. The it better not be the stomach. <laughs> Umbraco. Who has some experience with Umbraco? More than everything. <laughs> Sipke, you're really. When you are doing research, you do it deeply. <laughs> <laughs> so Umbraco, what's better, what's better in Umbraco? Just dedicated. I'm fine, I mean the, the policy, uh, in, in the limit, that's fine. Uh, what's better with Umbraco? Yep. I don't, I don't think it's the product's better, but I think they go around and offer paid specific training that people can sign up for and, and get up to speed on it. And it's kind of a come to your city, not you come to them. And I think okay. that model yeah. works pretty good for them. Yeah, seems so. The, the, the deployment module, the career module, okay. So training, career. Um, their organization of content is um, something that find it easier to approach. Yeah, so yeah, Bertrand's mentioning that in Orchard we, we organize content through types of contents, well, through stereotypes so of content. And, you yeah. know, stuff like and in that. Umbraco it's a tree yeah. of content. And for a user it's easier to find his content and to create new content. Not by concept, but what I'm managing. Which is yeah. actually what Orchard does good in terms of content types. We can create new types, you can define your content, but in Umbraco you can Browse it way better. It's way easier for a user to find something. Because I'm, I'm, I have some experience with some customer, and they're like, okay, I want to change this text in this page. And is it in widgets? And then if it's in widgets, uh, which, module, which widget among 100 widgets? Or is it in taxonomies? Is it in the blog? Is it in the content page? Everywhere. Is it on the list page? There are so many ways to look for your content, that, and there is no search box. So they are lost. Um, in Umbraco, okay, page, subtree, this, that, okay. I edit my content, whatever it is. So that's a good point. And also the training. So we need more training everywhere. Um, Benedek Zoltan, you, you have to start um, traveling. <coughs> they do training, okay. Yeah. Even free trainings online. You don't have to pay for them. There is free YouTube videos for that. Uh, WordPress, alphabetical order. What's better in WordPress? Oh, sorry. Who has some experience with WordPress? <laughs> Sipke has not touched WordPress. Sorry? He's too ugly. It's a boy. WordPress is a boy. That's not Kevin. Okay. Oh, oh, maybe that. <laughs> of uh, just being able to plug it in and then have the uh, modification exposed um, in the admin rather than uh, always uh, needing to dive into the code. In the theme, you mean for the theme? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, they have, 
it's actually we could do that. We just don't have any theme that you can change or the layout and everything from the back end. Yeah, we, Maybe we have, but and I'm not aware about that. But that's totally doable, yeah. And yeah, that's that's a good story because there are very <coughs> powerful themes in WordPress. Sometimes they are like WordPress itself, as huge as WordPress. You can do so many things, change the layouts, ch change the banners, add carousel. If it's part of the, the theme, you can do that, yeah. That's uh, very interesting. The community, for sure. But they have 60% of all the websites on the CMS today. So that means millions and millions of websites. Okay, well, WordPress is uh, easier to approach for the site owners and if you do it through. Uh, yeah, it's easier. I think the appeal, I mean, I, I just, the appeal to like people who don't know anything about. Yep. Uh, I, I read a stat last year, which was that one out of two WordPress instances that you have locally, let's say, oh, I don't know WordPress, and I set it up, okay, and it works, and I see a blog, one out of two of these websites, of these downloads, goes online, okay? So with Orchard, it would be one out of 1,000, maybe. Uh, so yeah, the, as you said, the appeal, when you set up Orchard the first time, oh, I understand that. I, you click and you have a blog running with a nice theme. It's an a finite product. You can use it. You have done nothing, and you can use it. With Orchard, you need um, 10 years of dev to have something. It's very nice, but well, I'm exaggerating, but you have to work to have something. Okay. WordPress, the default experience is you have something if you do nothing. And we tried to change that in Orchard, but uh, maybe we should go uh, further. I have a recipe which does uh, the default recipe being something usable. And for advanced users who want to customize, take another recipe, took the advanced path, but the default path should be the easy thing. The, the main change we made in Orchard in this way was with the enabling the, the output cache module by default. Before, Orchard was slow because you wanted it to be slow. If you wanted it to be fast, you had to enable the fast feature, the checkbox. Oh, check, fast. Because everything is optional, even fast, okay? Uh, so now we, and then, okay, we screwed. After two years of trying that, people don't get it, so let's make fast by default. Okay, and then, oh, now Orchard is fast. Yeah, it has always been fast. It just it didn't click the checkbox. Uh, so that's the story with Orchard. Maybe we should go further and uh, make it better, better by default. Um, good, thanks. Now let's talk about how we can apply everything um, to Orchard. And let's start with a blank state and, sorry, state, slate, and uh, do whatever we want on it. And what would it look like? But first, we need a new name. <laughs> if we have a new product, we need a new name. Brochure, okay? The CMS that you can tell your bro to use. Your <laughs> subcontinent. <laughs> this will be the code name. They have ASP.NET Next, they have Kudu, they have I don't know what project, whatever later. We have a good name, Steve. Steve, what a name. <laughs> Brochure, okay? And with a new name came a new logo. Come a new, comes a new logo. A cool logo. <laughs> okay. Hey, bro. Want some oh, brochure? Yeah. <laughs> Will not get that. <laughs> marketing. So this, yeah, about marketing. You get that, and I let you take some pictures. <laughs> Like a chart press, boo, well. And someday I will be a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> this one is easy. Heimlich, Bugs Life. This is the future of Fort Shard, a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> Eating weeds. So, what we need for Orchard next, I think. It's my opinion, we need continuity. We should not break, we will break them, but not that hard, okay? At least continuity for the developers. We, there is no need for new concepts. Everything is beautiful in our child. We just need a reason. Um, and this will be a new, it, this will be, I'm just, uh, hypothetically, a new major version, okay? It's not an Orchard 1, 9, 1, 10, 1, 11, whatever. 
it will be a, a new major version. So that people know it's different, it's a new product. So it could be your shot to zero. Maybe we jump directly to three zero, to 36, just to be above uh, uh, Chrome. <laughs> uh, a new major version implies breaking changes, okay? And this is why we want to make a new, version, new major version, to let people know there will be breaking change and to let us do breaking changes because sometimes we don't have the choice but to do breaking changes. And there will not be a guided migration path. You can say it's already the case today. You can migrate. Yes, you can always migrate. <coughs> Some people have done from 1.1 one one to 1.8, step by step, but it works. There is always a migration path, even if it's cumbersome sometimes. But there we could say, no, your website, your current website, or not sure one something, you won't be able to take it and put it on to zero. You will have to do much more than that. Uh, but that doesn't mean to break everything. This is kind of the continuity. The modularity, no, don't break it. It's good. We need modular. Okay? We don't, we don't remove stuff that works. We keep it. It's beautiful. Uh, the dashboard, yeah, we need a dashboard, but a new dashboard. We'll talk about it. We need content types. We need content parts. We want the versioning. It's beautiful. We want the multi-tenancy. So this is the, the continuity. It's the same principles, the same names, the same words, but uh, the event bus, and uh, also the existing modules. The goal is really, will be really to be, to have the, all the existing modules because they are all useful in a way, all the core modules, not the gallery modules, but all the core modules to be moved to Orchard to zero. It's not about having a new platform, a new empty shell, no. If we have a new Orchard to zero, we should have the exact same modules on the new system. So you can say, yeah, I can start my new, web new website with this platform, I have everything the same ecosystem with, with me. Um, and uh, I, I was uh, talking about that, we should, uh, um, you know the story about Umbraco and when they decided to restart Umbraco using SPNet MVC? Uh, they decided to rewrite everything. And, and uh, the issue with the community was that all the good stuff which was in Umbraco 4 and, uh, and they were using every day was no more in the Umbraco 5. So users were complaining because it's like, oh, where is this module, where is this feature, and so on. It was a kind of a new, empty, uh, website. So people were complaining a lot. And then they decided to stop it because they, they heard the community, the community complained, and they went back on their plan and they say, okay, we don't break, we don't remove everything, we continue to improve the current state, even if there are breaking changes, but we have them to, to do that, but we don't remove all the feature set that, uh, that were um, provided. So I think that we should not, we should take the, the experience they had and not fall into the same, uh, same, um, and with empty modules in their new system. What do we need to change? So we want continuity, but there are some things that we know we need to change if we start on a blank state, blank slate. Um, three aspects of that. First, from a developer's perspective. If you are a developer, an ultra developer, I think you all are, um, what, we need, what do we need to change? And a question mark, you see? Data access, who thinks we should change the data access in Orchard? Then, okay. Those people have used the data access, the other ones haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm sure for different reasons, we'll, we can, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, do we, should we use NuGet more? Yeah, every, every dev here will say, yeah, we should use NuGet, because then we can use the latest dependencies with one click, there are some issues in Orchard, and maybe we could go uh, over that. And even if we need our own gallery with our own versions of our own modules, that's fine. Should we simplify module development? Maybe for easy tasks, should we create, should we have to create a new module if we just want, uh, I don't know, a new path? Is there a way that we can create simple things simpler? to buy, I don't know, creating a predefined modules where you put your stuff, your junk inside? Uh, or can we create new programming models on this new platform and uh, that will simplify module development? I just want an activity in the workflow. I don't want to create a module. I just want a new activity. It's a uh, one file with logic and one file for the UI, done. And I put it there and you do it by yourself. Like we do for modules, you, create, you put something in a modules folder and we copy the, DLLs and we build it and we put them uh, where it needs to be. 
So that's good. Maybe we should do it in a, in a more uh, granular level. So for instance, shapes, um, should we remove shapes? Should we, should we simplify shapes? I don't think so. Maybe we should maybe simplify them or make them, for John, simpler. Uh, should we remove some abstractions, add more? Should we change how placement is, placement is done or make it simpler or make it invisible? I don't know. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. if I, no, no, fight. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Now, from a user's perspective, what can we change? Should we improve the performance? No, it's so fast today. <laughs> they, they would say there is, no, there is something wrong. Today, people install Orchard, they, mm, that's weird, it's fast. What are you doing? It's not Orchard, it's WordPress. No, no. Um, a new backend? Should we need a new, sorry, a new admin? Um, a new one, a new design at least, a new one, new logics, new dashboard, widgets in the dashboard? And from a management perspective, how should we change the way we manage Orchard? Uh, remove bottlenecks. Where's the bottleneck today in the Orchard management? Nick, uh, no, you, I can say that, you can't, okay? Yes, I'm the bottleneck. For instance, the pull request. Today, ask Antoine, ask Nick, they accept some pull request, and I'm like, oh no, we don't want that, remove that. So, but yeah, and, uh, true, true story, Antoine. I unpulled five pull requests from Antoine. I unpulled two pull requests from Nick, something like that. I changed. Yeah, yeah. We changed them, okay? Oh you pulled too much stuff in one pull request, no, we just want this part, not that. So yeah, that, that, in this way I'm a bottleneck because I have to validate what goes in. And sometimes I'm polite, I don't take them because we don't need that. It's a new feature, we haven't talked about that. We need to, talk to no, it's not because you make a pull request that we have to take it and that we will take it. We have to talk about it first. And sometimes your solution is not what we think should be the solution. That, that, but that's good to get pull requests. And we can say no to people because they get pissed off and they don't, pull, they don't give pull requests anymore. Uh, how many of you have pull requests that are still in the waiting state? And I like your pull <laughs> There are different reasons, actually. But yeah, Jeff and uh, Eric have good pull uh, Did I miss some of them? Sorry. You have? Pull requests that are missing. Well, you Skype me some things I put on my desktop, and I have to, yeah, that's different. Uh, triage. Triage is another issue, yeah. We try to do it every week when we have time, when one, one hour, and uh, when there is no game. No, that's wrong, I miss all the games, <laughs> all the time. Um, triage, yeah. But management bottlenecks, yeah. Uh, should we move to GitHub? Will it improve the pull request process? Will it improve the users? Um, everyone says yes. One is saying no in his head. Um, so that, that's a question. Should we make CodePlex better for that? Can we improve it? So uh, just a slide about data access because I think this, this could be a, a, a good reason to go to an Orchard VNX, how to change data access and what to say today and what I would like uh, it to be. Um, I'd like to simplify the, the story. Like today, we have so many ways of accessing the data. We have a useless abstraction about the ORM, which is not an abstraction because we have another way to go around the abstraction. And uh, the reason for the abstraction is no more a reason today, a valid reason today. We have the content query. We have the repository pattern. We have the HQL one. So first, there's too many ways to access data and you never know which one you should use. And you don't even know if the other one will, will support what you are trying to do. So if you, so Russell will agree with that because he tries to improve the performance by doing his own query and we don't know. Should I do SQL? Should I do HQL? Should I do repository? Oh, I started with content, content query and now I hit a wall, I can't do that, so I have to revert everything and start back with the repository and so on. Uh, link, no link, what is supported in link? So that's a mess. So maybe you should simplify that. Uh, we also should remove limitations based on the query languages we use today because there are some queries you can't do and you have to go to SQL and you have to hack to get the way to execute a SQL query. Um, we should also improve performance. We are using an Hibernate and we go, when we know every layer we add on top of data layer will slow data layer. So if we can remove those abstractions, we, may, we will improve performance. 
but we have some uh, constraints on the data access. We, whether we use relational databases or document databases is a question. Orchard is good for document databases, but relational is everywhere, and everyone knows that, and it's easy to use that, and we have better solutions for that. So I'd like to say we need both. We need a relational system, but which can do document um, database, which can be used as a document database. Uh, because I think we can't fight SQL today. Maybe in 10 years it will be different, but today I think we can fight SQL with all the, the, the offer which is there. Uh, we have the choice, we have the knowledge, we have the tooling. Uh, is there a lot of choices for, for uh, document databases? More and more, but enough. Is there a lot of knowledge of document databases? Uh, who knows SQL here? Or think knows SQL? And who knows document databases? What a little bit less, okay? 10 times less. So that's what, that's the knowledge. Who knows some tools to do SQL, like SQL Major, MySQL, uh, PHP MyAdmin, and whatever? And who knows which tool to use for a document database? Each document database has a different tool, okay, but a different paradigm and everything. But the tooling is here today. When we, when we not want to do business um, a BI, business intelligence, when we want to do ETL, extract, transform, and load, yeah, SQL is there, and everyone knows that and how to do that. Reporting, how to do reporting with a document database, what tools do you use? I don't know. Um, Orchard needs documents. The Orchard object model is best, is better for documents. And we proved it with 1.8 when we switched to the, to the new document paradigm, the InfoSet paradigm with the data, if you know about it. Um, so Orchard is better with documents. And we, I like to keep using SQL. We have three <coughs> SQL databases. There is SQLite, there is SQL C, there is SQL Express, uh, there is MySQL, there is PostgreSQL. <coughs> So we have free solutions, and are paid solutions. Uh, RavenDB, for instance, which is a document object, um, um, a document database on uh, .NET, is not free. And I don't want every Orchard user to have to pay for RavenDB when they want to create a website. Okay, I think this will be, this will be a, a blocking uh, decision. Uh, and we also need transactional, because Orchard is transactional, and MongoDB is not transactional. So we can't use MongoDB. So the choice is limited for uh, object databases, and it's really not limited for SQL databases. And I also like Orchard to have an embedded option. An embedded option meaning when you deploy your website, you don't need to set up a service, a server, to host your data. So with uh, today's embedded options, on SQL, we have SQLite, we have SQL C. You just copy paste your website, and it runs okay, on, the, on the machine if you have the web server. You don't need to have to set up a MySQL. You don't need to set up a SQL Server. You don't need to set up a RavenDB, a MongoDB, okay? You can just play and run. For development, it's very important. So for object databases, I'm not sure the, the option is there today. Um, not talking, talking about theming. What should we change in theming? I think I, I took that from Samuel. I'm not sure. Theming should not be an obstacle to creativity. Is it, did I take it from you? Do you agree? I think yeah. I agree. You agree, okay. I agree, too. I love it. Uh, yeah, so when you want to create a website, you get some mockups that are very nice. Wow, awesome website. Let's do that in the Orchard. Well, we need to remove that. Sorry, we can't do that. I don't know how to make that happen, and this won't be uh, editable. And Oh, sorry. Should we go to a static page instead? Uh, <laughs> theming is nice to reuse theme. It's nice to customize specific parts in Orchard. It's hard, well, in all the CMSs, but maybe particularly in, in, uh, in Orchard, it's hard to take a design ID and put it in place in a theme, okay? Um, so I think we should do something for that. I don't know what, but if you have ideas, if you have experience with other What you CMSs, showed on day one, I think it was, was using all less and not modifying the, it, the it's layout. It's one solution, but no, yeah, but it's the idealistic solution. It's everything works on my machine, I have 30 minutes, is a Microsoft presentation, and then you, you go into your computers and, wow, why have other issues? They were not tackled in the half an hour demonstration. In the real life, with the nice designs, it's very hard to make them themable in Orchard. So maybe because also we need a, a, a layout module, maybe, I don't know. 
try to make a very nice website, and when I see my, things like Samuel is doing, or uh, the web advanced guys also have done, all the, your stuff, I'm like, I know Orchard, I swear, I know Orchard very well. Uh, I don't know how to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, they, must, they are not using Orchard. They, they did something that's, oh, no Orchard. Uh, I don't know why you do that, but. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure you can add the content Orchard <laughs> tag in, uh, in WordPress, I'm sure you can do that. But that, that's an issue, I think if we need to, to also fix something in a new version, and if you have to break something to do that, we should tackle this, uh, this issue. Um, oh, this is not about, so the, we have this question very often in the forum, how do I change the title to be red? Okay, this is not about themes. This is, this is CSS, this is HTML, but the, this is, and this is not the problem I, I want to, to fix. Um, yeah, and there are two sides in theming. There is the custom themes for a single website and you want a nice website, you don't want to reuse it because there are reusable themes that you put on the gallery. Philips theme is a very nice example of reusable themes. He's doing stuff so that most of the site can quickly use an existing theme people don't, because people don't care. They just want a nice website and reuse this, uh, this one across them. They don't want a custom one. They want a reusable uh, theme, like the default WordPress theme. And the custom theme is, is another uh, story. So what should we change? Uh, should we change the placement? Should we change how shapes work? Simplify that. Should we remove drivers because maybe you don't want drivers to, to handle team? Um, and I will go faster now because we reached the end. Uh, caching. There are le different levels of caching in our change. We want to change that. We have output cache. Uh, but it's limited in reverse proxy management. So if you want to use a reverse proxy, then you have invalidation issues. How do you do that? Uh, Lombic has a, has a solution for that. Maybe we should think about the output cache in the first place with a solution for proxy invalidation. Uh, business cache. We have a module now, orchard.caching. But uh, uh, it's a very simple implementation. Get set. Get data, set data. Should we have more? And we have the settings cache, uh, the cache manager in Orchard. This one has an issue. It doesn't work in the farm, okay? There is no farm invalidation for that. And they also have a solution for that. Is the solution, well, but the issue is that this one needs signals, needs file system watchers, can be invalidated by anything which is on one machine. So how do you handle the differences with different machines? And uh, should we use Redis by default if we are in a multi-node environment? Should, be, should it be the default implementation? There, it's on Azure now, so we could say, okay, at least we have a, a hoster for that. Piotr won't disagree that we should use Redis because Redis is awesome. Maybe we should use that. Um, the comments, should we change the comments? Should we use PowerShell? Because PowerShell is very powerful. When we started that, um, I don't know why they, they chose to, to use uh, Bertrand, you know, I don't know why, why comments and not PowerShell? Why, why we chose? Yeah. Um, because the developer started that feature, we weren't having enough. Uh, okay, because we didn't know PowerShell. Maybe it, we should have used PowerShell. You see what uh, Piotr has done is very interesting when you might want to handle uh, multiple websites at, at, at a time. Um, <coughs> should we have online commands execution so I can connect to website and run a command on that? We have a, an experimental module for that, but it's not very good. In content management, should we keep drivers? Should we simplify drivers, remove them? Should we keep, remove, change content handlers? Data migration, what do you think about that? I think it's awesome, and I think we should keep that, but should we make it simpler? Um, the environment, do we want to use Autofax? Do you care about Autofax? Because you don't see it, actually. Um, but we need the eye, okay? Uh, how, what should we change in the configuration? Should we have um, multi-tenants wide configuration for everything. Should we have a better story for multi-farm storage of configuration? Where should we store shell settings? But it's extensible today, that's not, not really an issue. Should we keep the processing engine? It doesn't make sense for you because you don't know that. Some of you know what it is. I think it's awesome, but it's also very hard to understand how it works. Uh, the indexing, is it sufficient for you? Do you want something more? Do you want a new <coughs> do you not want Lucene? Um, do you want to keep recipes, extend them? There are so many things we can change in Orchard. And there is something which happened yesterday, ASP.NET VNX, whoa. What is the, where is the place of, uh, in ASP.NET VNX for Orchard? Does ASP.NET VNX as a place for Orchard? So if you remember the slides from yesterday, they were talking about the new signal, the new EF, the new everything, okay? and not the new orchard. They talk about it, it was not in the slides, like okay. So moving picture of the team, 
but they also said, yeah, we need Orchard on this thing. And for two reasons. For us to have fun, oh, let's, yeah, we can do that. Hey, we can play with ASP and Linux. Let's do that for uh, on the new version. Uh, and for them, it's very important because if Orchard, when, when I say for them, I mean the team. For the ASP and team, it's very important because if Orchard cannot work on ASP and Linux, there is an issue in ASP and Linux because it doesn't fulfill what it's meant to do. Okay, um, so it's for me it's important for two things because. My team needs that to validate it works, and they can okay they can say oh Orchard works on ASP.NET Linux, everything can work, okay. There are so, so many oddities in Orchard, fine we can we can handle everything, and for myself it's like yeah I have a toy to play with, new challenges you know. I want to do that, uh, and I sell it, sell it to you by saying oh it will be faster and everything. Uh, benefits. Roslyn, we can do dynamic compilation. We can add new features to the language, and we do today add new features using dynamics, using the shapes, and the, when you call a method, it's creating a shape, and when you call parameters, it's creating properties. Ooh, too complex. I don't want you to look at the code. And before it was abstracted with clay, crazy. So now we can um, change it in Roslyn. We can add new behavior for that, and we can also Intercept Y2 type and change the way it's compiled. That's crazy, but it's, this is awesome. We can do very good stuff with Orchard about that. Uh, pay for play. You don't need all these features. Or this this sold it yesterday. I'm not sure I even have to sell it. You're, you, yeah, you're convinced. Better performance. Uh, nothing can be faster than Orchard. <laughs> uh, portability. That would be awesome. Everyone who asks uh, for um, having Orchard running on Mono is just because they have Max. They want to be able to develop on their Macs and not to have a, a Windows VM to be able to do that. So I think this is kind of important for us. Uh, the risks, um, it's a new platform, so there will be bugs in the, the first version. Unknown bugs, okay, but I think so they, they will happen, so it's a risk also for Orchard. And uh, the, the question between the standard CLR and the cloud CLR, should we go, where should we go first? Should we just target the standard CLR on the new ASP.NET? Uh, MVC, or should, do, should we also target the cloud CLR at first, or wait? That's a, that's a risk, that's a question to you. Yeah. And uh, this will be the end, and the last one for you, because I'm done, said that. <laughs> Thank you, any question? Um, is there any plans to move to uh, the entity framework and yes and uh, I was just thinking with all the dot net done the sorry <laughs> ASP, and net, ASP next v next are we going to be just moving to will Orchard be moving to just using like Microsoft's technology for like dependency injection and and uh, if we move to ASP and v next the goal is ready to use the their dependency injection abstraction but we can still use Autofax. Right, right. But by default, will we'll Orchard just start coming packaged using like, instead of using like Castle Windsor and Autofax and all these I'm, other No, I think we'll have to decide. We'll have one because our users don't, don't need to change it. Right, okay. We, we will use uh, this specific implementation for their features they provide. For instance, do they support meta registrations like Autofax does? We can add metadata, which the default implementation doesn't support. How can we configure the dependency injection for that, for instance, we can have an XML file defining which instance to use instead of the one registered. Right. We can also override pertinent. This is something that the default implementation in ASP.NET won't provide. It's just you know, bootstrap. Right. And we need that, and we'll have to decide. So we might say, okay, we'll use Autofax because we are satisfied with that, with good performance. It has the features we want. So we, are, we have to, define, to decide. And uh, for anti framework, yes, we were using an Hibernate, and on the forum it's everyone saying, why an Hibernate and not anti framework? It's like kind of a Microsoft Half product, so why not NT framework? Because four years ago, or five years ago, when the project was started, NT framework didn't have the features that we needed. Now it's different, and now they are starting a new version, NT framework seven, and they are in the same team as Orchard, the same manager. So we, I can go to their office and say, how to do that? Can we add that? Can we? So when will you have that? We can also influence the, the development. So that's that's good for us, okay? You can't ask WordPress to have some influence on NT framework. 
we can, so that's good. Uh, and they're also more lightweight. They, their, their goal is to be way faster than they are today, uh, very um, uh, smaller memory footprint, everything we need. And you can, uh, you, can, you can do SQL if you want. That's the uh, number one support. And you can actually even store in anything. You can store in memory, you can store in SQLite, you can store in SQL Server. They also want to be able to store in uh, uh, object databases. It's really uh, extensible. So that, that, that could be a good solution too, politically and technically. Other questions? All right, thank you very much.